I'm messing around with the magneto drive. I'm going to cut out a disc of uh, 4130 in a moment. I started off by finding a piece. In fact, I found a piece of 8th. I was going to use 16th, but I'm now going to use 8th. And uh, I'm going to cut the square out in a moment, then bore it out on the lathe to the right diameter so it just slides over one of these jack drives. If I use 8th, it'll be a bit lighter. I don't want it being flimsy like this one. But the problem with this blighter is, uh, is the fact that actually it's, it's almost in four pieces because it obviously cracks across the drive where the drive goes that way and turns that away. So, of course, it's this bit of the lug, or that this lug and that lug, do all the work, and that one and that one don't even need to be there because all they do is nothing at all. They, they go in front. So, of course, the things crack there and there and um, is utterly useless. Now if it wasn't cut off with these two flats and was actually one piece each side of course the, the, the stress wouldn't be anywhere near as much on this lug because it would be taking the stress all the way round to there if that went like so, was circular. So I'm going to cut one of these out of eighth and weld it on there and there. Now the welding, I'm not a bad welder, my gas welding I'd give myself a 9 out of 10 and my art welding probably 7.5 to 8, depending on whether I remembered my glasses or not. Um, and of course, well, yeah, sort of art welding thick stuff, you know, anyone can do it, you, know, you see how farmers stick things together, it's all quite tremendously bojo and it seems to hang in for several years. But this needs to be 10 out of 10. So I'm going to take the parts down to my mate Bruce, who's just the other side of St Austell, who's a top-notch TIG welder, and he's going to weld the two pieces together. So, let's get this cut out first. That's cut down to size and ready to go to the welder. I don't do angle grinding or disc cutting in the workshop. It makes the most frightful mess. The stuff goes everywhere. And I know my neighbours really like the extra noise. It's a few days later and this uh, drive has been welded up very nicely whilst I was away doing a bit of lapping the world in an aeroplane. That uh, smaller diameter was built up with mild steel rod and turned down to size then the disc welded on the end very nicely by Bruce um, I had to give a little tickle with the Dremel inside because of course it shrunk only by a few thou but that's fine that's all fixed so I'm ready to try it or try timing up the uh, um, magneto on the on the back case one thing I will do though before I use that is actually I'm going to fit the old magneto drive and I have a drawing from the factory from the manual, this drawing here, I'm just going to check that everything lines up as it should and basically I get that picture when I've got the mag drive which is there sitting uh, on the end of the idler gear. I think that's worth doing before I cheerfully cut slots in this new piece and then find it's all buggered up and uh, not in the right place. That would be a bit foolish. It's about an hour later and uh, what I said about checking the timing I'm afraid was uh, rather prophetic because I put it all together and if you look at the drive here that I've placed on and you look at the drawing the engine is at top dead centre so this cylinder is on the firing stroke or right at TDC with the valves closed this one is TDC with the valves rocking so I know the camshaft's in the right place I've got the timing marks all lined up because there's a dot 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 and dot all there and that's not in the right place I did come up with a solution. I used quite a lot of colourful language, the sort of language the late Queen Mother probably used when her horses weren't doing too well at Ascot. But then after 
cup of tea in a digestive, I suddenly had a brainwave and it took at least 10 seconds to fix. I'll show you what the fix was. I've removed the mag drive and got the crankshaft gear, idler gear, camshaft gear. Now the relationship between these two gears matters very much. But this idler gear can be in any position. It's just it happens to have timing marks on it. So if we ignore the timing marks, what we want is, is this notch, this, this six star slotted drive to be upright. And of course, the tea and the digestive biscuit made me suddenly think that if I went round and just checked each of these in turn, I could see which one actually lined up. And it's that one that lines up. I put two pen marks on it, lines up with that little piece of alloy bar that I found that just fitted in the, in the notch nicely. So all I need to do is use my temporary timing marks. After all, this isn't going to move. It's not going to change once it's all, once the gear is slid in place. Yeah, you know, the relationship between those gears stays forever. And so that is in there now, top dead centre. I've got timing marks on the crank. I'll just make sure it's completely in the right place. I'll show you those when we time the mag. I put that on there now. And I hold the picture up. Ta-da! There we are. Problem solved. So the next thing is just to put the, take this off again, put the back case on, stick that on, stick the mag on, don't need to bolt it on, and check the timing marks. One of the things that's vaguely interesting about these magnetos is that you can uh, disable the impulse coupling. I read this in the manual, in the Ronka manual, because it has a, a bit on the uh, Bosch magneto. And if you take the screw out, in fact this cover comes right off, so take the screw out, take the cover off, the impulse is at that point still working and a uh, bit difficult to time the mag. With the um, BTH mags you have to click the impulse and then go backwards, back to the point where the points in the correct direction of rotation will start opening and that's your points opening position. On this you can merely rotate the back plate there and it disables the impulse coupling which is genius. I've never seen that before so that's going to make at least checking the timing a lot easier. I did have a bit of a clean up of the magneto as well, slip ring and all the rest of it off camera. So when it comes to the timing, I know that mag is basically uh, good to run, which it is. The magneto is on the back case and advanced lever down for advance on this. I've got a mag timing synchronizer here. They're very good. Can't really deal with that one, to be honest. It does dual magnetos. It's for airplanes, so it's got a red and green for port and starboard respectively. I've just got the green one on and you basically turn it on. It's got a little battery inside and the lights go out when the points open. So I'll show you from behind. I'm just going to rotate it. It's at about 50 degrees before top dead centre at the moment. So if I rotate it, there we are. Lights gone out and points open. If this was a British engine with the BTH mags, we wouldn't need to be worrying about this now with the timing gears because we'd use the vernier coupling but we don't have that option i'm just gonna the points are still uh, open sorry closed that's why the uh, green light is on as i rotate the crank there we are they're opening and as you can see they're opening before 36 degrees before top deck center which is too far advanced so what I can do is actually retard the magneto on the magneto advance retard lever. So what I'm going to do is just bring the timing mark here around to 36 degrees. This thing will beep. The light goes out and it beeps. The beeping is so you don't need to look for the light as well. It's rather irritating, but be that as it may. And then I'll retard the mag off until the points close again. So just bear with me in the beeping. I'll set it to 36 degrees. And I get hold of the lever and I retard the mag. There we are. So somewhere around there, just about there, is 36 degrees before top dead centre. So that's the maximum advance we want. Now if I retard the mag right off, so that's the lever fully up, and I continue to rotate in the direction of the thing running. Now that's top dead centre. Points don't open until about 10 degrees after TDC, which is far too late. I mean, that's just pathetic. The latest you want is TDC. Of course, the uh, 
the, dev- the impulse mechanism retards it for starting. And probably about 10 degrees before TDC is about the, the limit you'd ever want in terms of retarding the ignition. So there's plenty of um, uh, degrees of advance and retard available on the lever on the back of the magneto. So that's good. I'll just back that off. There we are. So I'm happy with the mag timing. So now I can make up the new uh, drive, cut the two slots, copy the old bit one. of wobble vision here. That's the old drive. Now on this uh, technical piece of plywood, I've marked a center line, a line exactly 90 degrees and a line at 15 degrees, which is what the mag drive was sitting at on the picture when the drive dogs, the sort of star drive here, these six were was vertical so that's marked up now I, I sort of trust the human eye just about and we know we've got quite a lot of adjustment on the lever so that works so we can take the same center up our new drive looking through the hole and that's about right there so I did have a mess around earlier. There's actually two little witness marks, pop, pop marks. I'm going to draw a couple of lines on here, drill these two holes out, which give me the base of the slot, and they're very carefully cut down to it. The slot should be six mil wide, because it's a, it's a German magneto, so it's metric, um, amongst other things. So I'm going to do that now, drill those holes, mark the slots, and cut them out. concentrate on not ballsing the job up rather than satisfying anything else it's a damn sight meatier than the original version so uh, let's put it in the back put the magneto on and and try it so that's the timing light on magnetos on the back we know that in full advance which the magneto is in that the um, point will open before we get to 36 degrees we've established that it doesn't matter in the least so let's uh, advance gently there we are that's in a very similar position to the Aronka drive so that's the drive complete there's just a couple of jobs to do before we kind of wrap this up um, I know there's the gasket to clean off around here I'm not going to do that on camera um, might remember the little seal housing that I made early on. I got the lip seal pressed in very nicely. That needs to be stuck on there with some gasket gunjo. But before I do that, there's no point putting that on and then making this all dirty again. The last thing to do on the casing is to elongate the holes underneath. As you will recall, I had to move the magneto back a little bit. So all I'm going to do is draw around the mag and then take the whole lot back to the bench, see how far back or how much I need to slot the holes and then slot them. There's no point slotting and making all that nasty aluminium mess going all over a brand new lip seal, then having to clean it off. So let's draw around it. It doesn't need to be perfect and indeed, as is the quality control on this workshop, it won't be. That will do. That's the new drive, obviously pressed in to place. I'm very pleased with that drive, actually. It really does look quite good. And I say it myself. And so that can all come off now. Let's take it to the bench and see how much material's got to be removed from the holes. Nine sixteenths. So nine sixteenths from the edge. Right, 9 sixteenth with my pen actually comes right to the edge of the hole there. So the centre of the hole wants to be right on the edge of that hole. I don't know whether you can see very well that these 
holes that will come very close to the edge of the aluminium. So actually from having a think straight away, instead of elongating those, I think I'm going to slot them right to the end, just, just these, these back holes, slot them to the end because I'm going to end up with a tiny bridge of material here anyway. Um, and that will give me some adjustment and a, and a clamping force. And then I'll elongate the front holes. Elongating the holes isn't perfect. I did think about sort of filling them and drilling them again and all the rest of it, but I'm not going to. My reasoning wise, of course, is the magneto can't move forward. It can't move any closer to the engine because it's snug up against the mag drive anyway, and none of that can go forwards. It's not going to have any sort of load on it that way. So we only want to prevent it coming backwards. If these are elongated, then the mag can't come backwards. If these are slotted, well, at least the bolts, which will be done up, they've got holes for wire locking. They can be done up with washers underneath, and they're going to be holding the mag on. It's not perfect. I think we can accept the unperfectnessness of it all. So let's do that. Right, that's screwed down tighter than Donald Trump's hairpiece. Well, that's complete. Um, all four bolts are in the bottom. The seal is in, the drive is there. I was able just to put it on so there's no great push on the end of the uh, idler gear. It doesn't want any preload on it one way or the other. It just wants to be snug, and that is all. So that's done. My inner rain man is very satisfied. Um, I think next time we look at this engine, it will be within a, a view to getting it running in a, in a week or so. There's a, quite a lot of engineering to do, which you're know, sorting out gaskets, oil feeds, breathers, um, various other things, the carburetor, which is on the bench. So rather than slow things down by making lots more film about nonsense, I think the next film will be putting this engine together. When you see this engine sort of next, I think on the airframe, hanging on the ancillaries and, and the very small amount of plumbing and uh, prop on, take it down the garden and try and rev the hell out of it. That'll impress the neighbours no end. Anyway, if you want to see all that and not miss it, remember to subscribe and press likey buttons or dislike buttons or go and have some crack cocaine, I don't really mind. Anyway, maybe see you soon. Bye bye.